I'm just stuffing my face before we get started. Um, if you watched my stories before, I had a little mishap in the kitchen. Ah, welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Um, so we are going to start with a block. If you have a block or a book or a stool or anything, um, even if you're close to your couch, you can do this on your couch or on your wall. Um, so have those things handy or close or just reposition yourself if you need to. Um, and we're going to start... In one of two ways. So if you have a set of blocks at home, two are ideal, but one is utilized for this first opening. And um, otherwise, if you have a towel or a blanket handy that you can just kind of roll up, we're just going to start to open up the shoulders. So we're going to start either with one or two blocks. And the blocks would be positioned so that one of them is under the shoulder blades on its medium height, the other one on its top height or medium to support the back. So as you're reclining back, you're able to set it along the spine and drape the shoulder blades around. And then just depending on how the chest feels, you'll find the height for the head. And if only one block is available, then you might turn it down this way. And still you want to find your mid back. We want to start to open the chest and the shoulders. So don't have it too low. We want it a little bit higher up towards the shoulder blades. And if you're not using a block, you'll roll up a blanket, which I don't have. So I'll show you with an extra yoga mat. So you'd roll up a blanket into a nice kind of thick tube and then use that to recline back and just allow the shoulders, we really want the shoulder blades or the shoulder heads to come down towards the floor. And so just finding your way into this initial heart opening position. And once you arrive in your heart opening position, then just start to connect with your breath. So if you're just jumping on either a rolled up blanket, just underneath, kind of right where the shoulder blades start, the wing bones, a block or a book, something that as we begin to recline back, we just allow the chest to open. And if you have two blocks, you can set yourself up for more of a deeper heart opener just by setting one on its medium height and the other taller. Starting to settle into your body. And for the first few moments, just starting to breathe into the deepest breaths that you've taken all day. I always find the first really deep breath of a yoga practice is almost like my coming into my body. It's like the, the beginning. Just a little bit of a way for you to return home to yourself. And so in your heart opening pose with your spine just collapsing and draping over the block, or a rolled blanket or whatever position you found yourself in. See if you can maybe just reach your arms overhead and grab opposite wrists or elbows or forearms and just let the backs of the hands rest onto the floor. And as you move into these deeper breaths, close your eyes. It might even feel really really grounding to place one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest or the heart space. 
and just start to relax the mind just for a moment, just observing the sensation of breathing. A vital aspect of our survival that we take for granted every single day. In yoga, we refer to the breath as prana, which translates directly as life force. And so maybe even holding that intention of that type of a translation as you breathe this life force into the body. The yogis see the life force as being this gift from the creator that we just so carelessly consume without so much as feeling the gratitude and so just noticing the lungs as they expand and contract and just feeling this sense of gratitude that the body knows what to do to sustain your your life without you having to even think about it and as we allow ourselves to tap into the very mystery that it is to be we start to shift things internally and we take more of a witness approach to living our lives instead of not really being in control, not really noticing any of the subtleties, the intricacies that there are of being. And so here with your breath, feel your rib cage expand, get wider as you breathe in and then contract. Notice anything else that happens as you're breathing. Any other sensations that arrive, notice where the breath falls naturally too. Often we can feel this heaviness on the chest and on the heart when we've been breathing very shallowly into the throat and the chest area. And so allow your breath to grow. Often it's said in yoga that when we are breathing in such a way and bringing awareness to the self in such a way that we are able to access really deeply stored emotions. And so if you feel at any time, any emotion in the body that needs to be released via a laugh, a cry, whatever, a curse word, you do what you need to do. You can become frustrated or deeply emotional in our practice. And so just be a witness to all that is. We'll find another few breaths before we begin just to make our way up to seated. And that's when you'll want to have either the wall handy, um, some sort of like a, a chair or a bench works well, um, either that or blocks. And so if you're working with the edge of a couch or a chair, we're going to move into kind of a supported um, child's pose position. You'll want your knees just a little bit wider. You'll walk your arms towards your chair or your couch or the wall even. You can do this up against the wall. And you'll just place the edges of your elbows down. Maybe the blanket, if you have a blanket, you can use that for a little bit of cushion. And we want the elbows kind of about in line with the shoulders, maybe a little bit wider. Palms can come together to prayer. If you like, or you can rest your palms just between your shoulder blades as you re relax your head and your neck. And we're gonna stay here for a little bit of time. Now, again, if you're using the wall, you'll come into that child's pose with your knees, and you can maybe, instead of elbows, walk your hands up the wall. you are using blocks two blocks at maybe the medium height it's just taking some time to position yourself and then to reconnect with your breath
Notice how breathing feels in this different position. Allowing your breath to move deeply in and out of the body. And just noticing whatever sensations there are to notice. As the mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. Lick your lips and swallow here. Relax your jaw, your throat, your tongue. Softening all the muscles of the face. And a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, begin to slowly lift up and out of this pose. Placing all props off to the side. And we'll meet just in seated, legs crossed. Sukhasana easy pose, so if you can, placing one shin in front of the other so that the ankles aren't crossed, but you've got one foot behind the other, tucked right into the pelvis, and then the other shin in front. Now, from here, if you have a block handy, great. You can set one up in front of you for a place to rest the head, but this is not necessary. We're going to reach the arms behind us and just interlace the fingers. And as you inhale, begin to lift your heart and drop your knuckles with straight arms towards the floor behind you. Breathing in and out through the nose. And with arms outstretched behind you in this way, really pushing the heart forward. Allow your chin to drop towards your chest. And then from chin to chest, roll left to right, left ear, left shoulder. And then forwards, right ear, right shoulder. Starting to just make space in and around the head, neck, and shoulders. Noticing where you're holding any tension. Find a nice big breath in, lengthen your spine, and as you exhale, begin to fold forward any amount, lifting the knuckles to the sky. Perhaps we bring forehead down towards the mat, maybe towards the block. Allow your breath to move in and out. From here, you might even rock the wrists from left to right. Just noticing how the shoulders are feeling one at a time. Big breath in. And then exhale to rise all the way back up. We'll walk the palms forward and come onto all fours into kneeling. Tabletop position. Knees underneath hips and wrists underneath shoulders. From here on the inhale, lift your tailbone, tilt your pelvis forward, drop your belly button towards the floor. Lift your gaze forward and see if you can spread your collarbones nice and wide. Drawing the heart forward. And then as you exhale, press into the palms of your hands, 
Begin to tuck the tail round the spine, lifting and arcing it up towards the ceiling. Maybe rocking side to side in either position as we move through a few rounds of these. Inhaling, lifting your tail, tilting your pelvis, navel drops low, chest pulls forward. We want the sensation that the heels of the hands are moving towards the knees. Exhale, rounding the spine all the way up to the sky, looking for as much contrast as you can create. Inhale, moving in towards your cow pose, back bend, lifting the heart. Exhale, rounding the spine. Again, any and all additional movement side to side, just to make space into the body, is welcome here. This is your practice, and so just getting used to inhabiting your body. Not something that we often really think about. Now from here, let's come back to a neutral tabletop position. And we're gonna walk the palms forward and wide, about two of our own hand lengths, if we can. From here, we're gonna work on keeping the hips squared right above the knees, but dropping the chest low. And it can be helpful if you have a block to drop your chest down towards the block, just your, your breastbone. And you can lower that block down as you go. Maybe eventually chest comes down. Walking hands a little wider when we sense that there is a bit of difficulty. Find a few breaths in stillness here. In and out through the nose. And as you're ready, press into palms. We're going to lift up just subtly. Exhale, sink again. Inhale to lift, just priming the shoulders. Exhale to lower. Pressing into the palms, straight arms. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. From here, look forward. Inhale. Press into your palms. Begin to slide your hips forward. Come all the way to your belly. Take your fingertips behind you. And either interlace the hands, or if you have a blanket, you might grab onto the blanket at, other, at either side, or a sock, or a belt, or something of that nature. The knuckles point towards the feet. Start to peel your shoulders up and off the mat. Now you might think about raising your wrists here. Knuckles in the direction of heels. Keep the tops of your feet planted. Legs engage so much that your kneecaps lift. And knuckles are driving back. Bring your chin to your chest as you continue to lift and allow your chin to rock from left to right. And then let's find a nice still pose for three breaths, lifting the wrists, lifting the shoulders. Big breath in. And as you exhale, lower all the way down. Take your palms beside your rib cage. Tuck your toes. Press back. Child's pose. Take a few breaths here in your child's pose. When you're ready, we'll make our way to downward facing dog, lifting the knees. Always generous at the knees for the first few downward dogs of the day. Allowing one heel to come down towards the mat and then the other. Deepening your inhales and lengthening your exhales and really coming into your awareness of body. Your awareness of time and space of here and now and how the body takes up space. Starting to just explore the parameters of our body as we invite any organic movement here. 
doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to be for the goal of making space in the body. When you're ready, we'll inhale, look forward, and walk the feet to meet the hands. At the top of the mat, forward fold, soften your knees and bring your belly to your thighs as you fold, draping your body over your legs. Find your breath. Allow your shoulders to hang heavy, nod your head, yes and no. Relax your jaw, muscles of the face. And if you have the habit of carrying all sorts of the weights of the world on your shoulders, now is a really great time to metaphorically and physically release that. All that is not yours to carry. Big breath here. Now reach your hands just towards your low back and interlace the fingers if you can. And as you exhale, begin to straighten the arms. Knuckles might just extend back, but perhaps they lift maybe a, a little bit in the direction of the ceiling or towards the wall in front of you. Fighting just a few breaths here. In and out through the nose. And on your next exhale, lift your gaze forward and then begin to use your arms to pull the body all the way up to standing. Release the palms, turn them forward. Loop your shoulders up, back and down, away from the ears. Nice long neck, tall spine, softening the tuck to your tail and drawing your navel back and up. Relax the shoulders, lick the lips, and swallow. Inhale, sweep the arms to the sky. Lift your gaze to follow your fingers. Exhale, fold forward, belly to thighs. Inhale, hands to shins, lift halfway straight spine. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank pose. So we're gonna hold this plank pose a little longer than you want to, so knees down or straight legs, your choice. Look down at your hands and spread them nice and wide, pressing your thumb, specifically an index knuckle down. Knuckle being the base where the finger connects to the hand, not the knuckle that we think of. I don't even know what that's called, but you know what I mean. And then you want the other fingers to be nice and wide, gripping down almost like little tree frog fingers. Tucking your tail and seeing if you could bring your hips towards your low ribs. Straightening the legs if they're extended, nice and strong. Lift the space between your shoulders. And with your exhale, very slowly bend the elbows, draw them into the rib cage, lower slowly to the ground. One day, hips and chest land equally. Untuck the toes, place the palms under the shoulders or wider than the shoulders, your choice. Lift the heart, inhale, cobra. Shoulders up, back and down, hold here for a moment. Let your breath move in and out. And very slowly with the exhale, start to lower down. Take your palms beside your ribs, tuck your toes, hips back, exhale. Child's pose, downward dog. Reconnect to your breath. In and out through the nose. Next inhale, look forward, soften the knees, step, hop, or float to the top of your mat. Forward fold. Belly to thighs. Lift halfway, inhale, straight spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back. Plank pose. Lift the space between your shoulder blades, knees down or straight legs. Finding that the shoulders are stacking, the wrists are slightly beyond them. Find your breath. Can you press the mat away from the body? Can you lift the space between your shoulder blades so that the wing bones are not sticking out and we're not collapsing into the joints, but we're lifting the body up and out of the shoulder sockets? Big breath here. 
Exhale, flow through vinyasa, either all the way to the stomach or 90 degrees, halfway. Lifting the heart, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, send the hips back, downward dog. Find your breath. In and out through the nose. Your next breath in, look forward, soft knees, step, hop, or float to the top, forward fold, belly to thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, straight spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise all the way up, lift your gaze. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back to your plank. Last really, really long plank. Lifting the space between your shoulders. It's better here to have your knees down at the mat than to allow your hips to sink, creating the sway banana back. So you want your hips up towards the height of your shoulders, lifting the space between your shoulders and shortening the front side of the body ribs towards hips. Big breath in. Exhale, move through your vinyasa, elbows to the ribs as you lower, lifting the heart. Upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Reconnect to your breath. From here, inhale, look forward, knees soft, step, hop, or float to the very top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, straight spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise, lift your gaze. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, draw your heart forward, gaze down. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank. Exhale, move through your vinyasa, lifting the heart on your inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. From here, sweep your right leg to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, pull the right knee into the belly, round the spine as you step, hop or help, right foot between the hands. Pull your back heel down and in on a bit of an angle, 45 degrees, the heel is behind the toe line, Right heel matches left heel in alignment. Arms rise, warrior one. Draw the shoulders down away from the ears and slide your right shoulder back to meet the line of your left shoulder. So both shoulders are facing the front of the mat. Find your breath. Now if we can bring the palms together to touch without shoulders pinching the ears and without ribs flaring, then we may do so. Find your breath. Sink into your right knee. Making sure right knee is in line with the right hip and right knee is stacking the right ankle. Find a big breath here. As we exhale, sweep the arms behind you, interlace the fingers, lift the heart. Reach the arms long behind, big breath in. And as we exhale, humble warrior, dropping right shoulder to the inside of right knee, knuckles to the sky. Resist the urge to balance your weight on your right leg, but instead sink your chest to the inside of that right leg as you lift your knuckles high. Let's find a little bit of a flow with this. Inhale to rise. And exhale to fold. Lift the knuckles high. Inhale to rise. Reach the arms far behind you. Exhale, fold. Knuckles to the sky. Last inhale to rise. This time sweep the arms to the sky. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back to plank pose. Knees down or straight legs, find a breath in. Exhale takes you through your vinyasa, elbows to the rib cage, lower to the belly or halfway lift the heart, inhale. Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Come back to your breath. Now you're really probably starting to feel Lots of awareness in the shoulders. Find your breath in and out through the nose. And when you're ready, lift that left leg high, breathe in. 
Exhale, knee to the belly, round the spine. Step, hop or help, left foot between the hands. Pull in right heel down and slightly in on an angle, 45 degrees. Heel to heel alignment, arms rise, warrior one. So naturally, your left shoulder wants to lead. So slide your left shoulder back in line with your right. There's a little tiny twist happening at the upper spine. Palms face each other or together to touch so long as we can contain. Low ribs drawing in, core engagement, shoulders down away from ears. Sink into the left knee. Are you breathing? In and out through the nose. You're remembering to tune into the sensation that it is to breathe. Even in our labored breathing, it is a gift. Find your breath. Your exhale, sweep your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, and inhale to lift your heart. Exhaling to fold forward. Humble warrior knuckles to the sky. So really extending those arms as high as we can get them. Sinking into that left knee and resisting the urge to balance the body weight on the left leg. Instead, dropping the torso just to the inside of that left knee. We'll take a little bit of a flow. So inhale, lift your heart. Try to remain in the same bend at the knee. Exhale, fold. Offer your left shoulder to the inside of your left knee. Inhale, rise. Lift the heart. Exhale, fold. Shoulder to the inside of knee. Inhale, rise. Sweep the arms to the sky. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands. Step back. Plank pose. Inhale in your plank. Exhale, move through your vinyasa. Elbows to the ribs, halfway or 90 degree bend. Lifting the heart, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, hips back, downward dog. Reconnect to your breath. Now is a great time to find child's pose if you'd like. And if you ever find during your practice that you're kind of chasing your breath, let your exhales come out your mouth. <sighs> Deepening your inhales and lengthening your exhales. On our next inhale, look forward, soften your knees. Step, hop, or float to the top, forward fold, belly to thighs. Hands to shins, lift halfway, breathe in. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise all the way to the sky. Exhale, palms of the heart. Samastiti. Find your breath. Perhaps even feeling your heart beating. As we attempt to open up across the chest and the shoulders, just allowing that heart to crack wide open. Sending some gratitude to that beating heart. Release the palms forward. Shoulders up, back, and down. Inhale, bend your knees. Sink your hips low. Sweep your fingertips forwards. Tuck your tail. Send your weight into your heels. Lift your toes. Spread them wide and see if you can set them down one at a time, sending your hips back. And as you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back to plank. Big breath in. Exhale, move through your vinyasa, elbows to the ribs, lifting the heart on your breath in. Exhale, hips back, downward dog. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, knee to the belly, rounding the spine to step, hop or help, right foot between the hands, pull back, heel down and in, warrior one alignment, arms rise, inhale. Reach your left arm forwards, and then cross your right elbow just on top of the inner left elbow, bring the palms to the shoulders, or the backs of the hands to touch, or the palms together to touch as you lift the elbows up and away from the face. Sink into your right knee and find your breath. Shoulders relax down away from the ears. Soften your jaw. 
Allow your breath. Take your mind more so to the breath than to worrying about the difficulty. It is what it is. Allow it. This is where we become refined in our ability to find comfort within discomfort. And the only comfort is in the breath. Breathe in. And as you exhale, start to take your left elbow towards the outside of your right knee. Find a little bit of a twist. If you can get your elbow right to the knee, you might hook it on the outside, almost to use the knee to allow for a deeper stretch. Are you still breathing? In and out through your nose. Deepen your right knee bend. Got a nice big breath in. Exhale, unwind, release the arms, sweep them to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank. Big inhale to solidify your plank. Exhale, move through your vinyasa, elbows to the wrist, lifting the heart on the breath in. Then sliding hips back on the breath out. Reconnecting to your breath, in and out through the nose. Inhale, sweep your left leg to the sky. Knee to the belly, round the spine, step hop or help, left foot between the hands. Back heel down and in 45 degree alignment, heel to heel, arms rise, warrior one. Palms face one another, shoulders relax, sink into your left knee. Reach your right arm forward. Left elbow crosses on the inner right elbow crease. Palms to the shoulders. Backs of hands or palms to touch. Lift the elbows so they come up towards your eyesight. Allow the shoulders to separate across the back and drop them down away from the ears. Notice what it is that you're feeling as you sink into your left knee. Big breath in. And then exhale, begin to twist gently, placing the right elbow on the outside of the left leg. And just maybe hooking that elbow in so that we can facilitate a little bit of a deeper stretch. Breathing in and out through the nose. Pressing equally into both feet as we sink into the left knee. And a nice big breath in. Exhale to unwind. Inhale, sweep the arms to the sky. Exhale, fold, plant the hands. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, flow through vinyasa, lowering down, lifting the heart on your breath in cobra or up dog. Exhale, hips back, downward dog. Let your knees come down. Untuck your toes, child's pose. Reconnecting to your breath, a few sighs out the mouth. Notice what it is that you're feeling as you relax the shoulders. And on your next inhale, look forward. Reach your arms straight out in front so that even your forearms are lifted. And then come onto your fingertops, kind of like piano hands where your palm is lifted. As you inhale, we're going to start to walk the hands over to the right side, as far right as we can manage. And then as we exhale, start to relax down here. For a little bit more sensation, you can take the left palm towards the top of the right hand. Find your breath. In and out through the nose. Big breath in. Exhale fully. On your inhale, lift your gaze. Return to the piano fingers and just exhale. Both hands over to the left. As far left as we can manage while maintaining breath. And then allow the body to rest here. Finding more depth if we need it by walking the right palm to the top of the left hand. Breathe in and out. 
through the nose. Noticing the sensation that it is to breathe. Sending gratitude to this beautiful, whole, perfect body for everything that it does intuitively without you needing to think about it. Got a nice big breath in. Lift your gaze and as you exhale, walk your hands back through center. Now we're gonna shift forward from here with the palms coming down onto forearms. And then walking the feet back into a plank position. So forearm plank, I know you thought we were done, almost. Press into the palms. And what we'd like to see here is that your wrists are in line with your elbows. But depending on mobility of the wrist, we might have to allow fingers to come together. Just don't let your elbows come wider than your shoulders. So tuck the elbows in line with your shoulders. Palms can come together even in prayer if you need. Or we can start to plant the palms, eventually working them so that both forearms and wrists are parallel. Finding your breath here. Take your gaze and just point it towards the, the space between the thumbs. We're going to begin to walk the feet forward, coming into a version of downward dog called dolphin dog. What ends up happening as we do this is that the head gets closer to the floor and that's because we allow the shoulders to collapse. So look forward towards the space between the thumbs, press into your palms and shift back. You want to press the hips back. That might mean here that your knees need to be bent. That's okay. Finding a few breaths here. Now, if you're playing with any arm inversions, you might lift one leg. You might soften your left knee and just find a few donkey kicks if you like. Making sure we keep the gaze in between the arms. At any point, when you're ready, knees can come down. Send the hips back. And this time, walk the arms back towards the feet. Allow the shoulders to drape over the legs. A few sighs at the mouth. <sighs> Reconnecting to the body, to the breath. And just one more round. Starting to walk the hands forward, lifting the gaze, placing the forearms down. Lifting the hips, tucking the toes, and we'll come right into that dolphin dog position. So the goal here is not to let the shoulders slide forward. We want the shoulders to come back behind the elbow creases if possible. And again, that might mean significantly bending the knees here. We've changed the level of our downward dog, making it more difficult for the hamstrings. If you are working on an arm balance, you might lift the left leg and try at the other side, softening the right knee and kicking left leg for some little donkey kicks, maybe catching a little bit of hang time. Finding your breath wherever you are. when you're ready, knees come down, hips back, walk the hands back towards the heels and relax the shoulders. A few sighs out the mouth. Finding your breath and just slowing down your pulse by now allowing your breath to relax just a little bit. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Find a nice big breath in. 
As you exhale, just begin to drag the body all the way up to seat it. We're going to meet with legs extended out in front of us. So we're going to find a variation of Gomukhasana um, or the full posture if that's in your practice. And what we'll start with is bending into the right knee so the left leg stays straight. And then just cross the right foot over to the left side. And if you have a blanket handy and your hips are feeling tight, then elevating yourself on a block, a bulk, a blanket is really helpful. Because we want to start to see if we can bring right knee down towards left knee. And we do so by just kind of tucking that right heel towards the upper outside of the left leg, up towards the hip if we can get it there. So this might be as far as we come, and you might have a right knee that's up in the sky. That's okay. Again, elevating on something will help with this. The full postures in your practice, you'll also bend the left knee and take your left heel to the outside of your right hip. What we want to make sure of when I say if it's in your practice, it means that your right hip or your right hip is not lifting up away from the mat in order to tuck both heels into that position. If it is, we can keep this posture but elevate for sure. We want to have the full benefit. Then from here, your left arm will reach up towards the sky. Turn your palm towards the back of the room and place it in between your shoulder blades. Use your right hand to help your left elbow up towards the sky. And then release your right arm out to the side. Turn your palm. And we're gonna place the back of the right hand on the low back. Now, if you have space to do so without changing your spinal integrity, you might walk the back of the right hand up the spine maybe the fingertips meet but they don't meet at the expense of your posture so you want your spine to be really really tall you'll start to feel some communication from your hip relax your shoulders your jaw your face inhale to grow just a little bit taller now this is enough for most of us as we focus on just relaxing the shoulders if you're looking for the full pose we might start to fold forward any amount bringing the nose or the chin in the direction of the right knee. Finding your breath. Trying to keep both of your sit bones grounded here. Deepening your inhales and lengthening your exhales. Nice big breath in, and if you are folded, exhale to rise all the way up nice and slow. If your fingertips are gripping, just softly release that and take your time to first release the right arm and then the left arm. And give the shoulders just a couple rolls. Now if your left heel is beside your right hip, extend left leg. And then uncross that right leg, extend it forward, give the legs a bit of a shake. From here, we'll bend into the left knee and step the left foot to the outside of the right leg. Again, walking the heel back towards the outside of the right thigh or hip. And again, we might stay here. We might elevate up on a block or a blanket, and if it's in your practice, you can bring that right heel towards the outside of the left hip, making sure that both sit bones, particularly the left, is still grounded. From here, right arm reaches forward, up towards the sky, turn the palm and place it between the shoulder blades. Left arm just to help the right elbow up towards the sky. And then release that left arm out to the side, turn the palm and place the back of the hand at the low back, bending at the elbow. If we can walk the back of the hand up towards the mid spine or upper spine without changing the integrity of our posture, then we may do so, maybe even fingertips come together. And I say maybe because for some people, depending on how your bones are made, maybe never. All of these yoga postures do not look the same in every body. And so just be really mindful that some of us have joints that are very deep. Others have joints that are very shallow that allow for more flexibility. And so it can be very illusory to look at another body and expect that yours should do the same thing. Inhale, lengthen your spine, soften your jaw. And if it feels right, you might fold, you might not, because this is enough as it is, relaxing shoulders. And if you're folding, then your nose or your chin comes towards the direction of your left knee. Finding your breath in and out. Mm. 
Deepening your inhales and lengthening your exhales. You're folded all the way. Take a big breath in. Exhale to rise. Starting by releasing left arm first and then the right. If you've got right hip, right heel beside your hip, extend right leg. And then release the left. Give your shoulders and your knees just a little bit of a shake. From here, you might want to block handy or a book. We're going to bend into the knees. Make sure there's plenty of space behind you to recline and start to come all the way down onto the back. Now the block is there if we need it for additional support. We're going to walk the heels close enough that we can graze the heels with the middle finger. Now lift and tuck each shoulder blade underneath the back as if you were trying to create a little bit of a tunnel for your upper spinal column. Press your triceps, your forearms, and your palms down into the mat. Inhale, lift the hips. So make this more than about a back bend. Make this about opening the shoulders. You can do so by walking the hands together underneath the hips and interlacing the fingers, straightening at the elbows and pressing pinky edge down into the mat. As you lift and tuck the shoulders a little bit more firmly underneath the back, perhaps heels lift in order to alleviate any sensation in the low spine. Find your breath in and out through your nose. Now we're going to hold this for as long as we need to. The block is there to support the hips if we're feeling fatigue in the legs. Continue to really press the arms down in towards the mat. Now if shoulder stand is in your practice, you can move that right from here by bringing hands towards the hips or the low back. Lifting legs up towards the sky and then lifting your hips, taking palms towards the low back. If this posture is not in your practice, you can stay as you are with the feet down. If you have a block underneath your hips, from there you might extend legs to the sky. Otherwise, we can come all the way down onto the back. Extend the legs and reach the arms overhead. So just finding any variation. Legs up the wall is a beautiful alternative. And if you'd like to go there, you can take that same blanket or block that you started with. A blanket would be preferable. Roll it into a little tube and stick that just underneath the shoulder blades, just like we started. Now, if you are in full shoulder stand and plow is in your practice, I recommend you take plow with extended arms so that you can find that extra opening in the shoulders. Wherever you find yourself, find your breath. How you move from here on in is completely up to you. You might stay as you are if you found yourself in a really comfortable position, legs up the wall. You might start to find any final closing postures that the body feels like it needs. And then move towards your version of Shavasana, whatever that looks like.
as we move into our Shavasana. I'll just close with some words from this next kind of chapter here in this book I've been reading called Your Life Purpose. The book is called Oneness with All Life by Eckhart Tolle. It's just a few quick quotes and um, things taken from his book called The New Earth. Your life has an inner purpose and an outer purpose. Inner purpose concerns being and is primary. Outer purpose concerns doing and is secondary. The true or primary purpose of your life cannot be found on the outer level. It does not concern what you do, but what you are. That is to say your state of consciousness. Action, although necessary, is only a secondary factor in manifesting our external reality. The primary factor in creation is consciousness. No matter how active we are, how much effort we make, our state of consciousness creates our world. And if there is no change on that inner level, no amount of action will make any difference. We would only recreate modified versions of the same world again and again, a world that is an external reflection of the ego. Once you have had a glimpse of awareness or presence, you know it firsthand. It is no longer just a concept in your mind. You can then make a conscious choice to be present, rather to indulge yourself in useless thinking. You can invite presence into your life, that is to say, make space. With the grace of awakening comes responsibility. You can either try to go on as if nothing has happened, or you can see its significance and recognize the arising of awareness as the most important thing that can happen to you. Opening yourself to the emerging consciousness and bringing its light into this world then becomes the primary purpose of your life. As always, I will take a photo of those beautiful words and post them to stories after we're done. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you spend a lot of time over the weekend just being instead of doing. Um, and I'll be here on Saturday morning if you feel like being together, 8 a.m. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a beautiful evening. Namaste.